Number seven. Um, so I often will talk about, because I, I think this shows up on the exams a lot, um, kind of interesting words. Um, some of you may have heard me say the Virendil Trust, for example. Like it's sort of a thing that doesn't show up a lot, but it's an interesting word, and so it shows up on the exam a lot. Well, here's one, posolons and superplasticizers. These are just great words, and they're easy to ask questions about. I don't know what kind of questions they would ask, but I just thought we'd sort of use it as a way to kind of get into some of these issues. So, question seven. Posolons are added to concrete mix for, this actually has two potential answers, but the first one that I would answer is that they uh, are added for strength. Um, what they're really added for, though, when you kind of look behind the scenes, is actually uh, to save money. Because uh, what posolons are, are generally, there's quite a wide range of posolons. They actually, the, the term actually comes from uh, the Roman days. It uh, has something to do with lime or something um, back in the Roman days. And uh, so it's a term that has been around for literally thousands of years um, in different quite subtle variations. Um, but these days when we talk about posolons, we're usually talking about things that are similar to fly ash or something like that. And those are industrial um, uh, products that, that are kind of uh, offshoots from when they're making something else. And there's a bunch of examples of it, uh, of these things that, that are, uh, nobody wants. And so if we can use those and they will do a similar thing to what the uh, Portland cement does in the concrete where it, it uh, hydrates and mixes uh, in, in a sort of chemical reaction in order to create a strong bond that then holds the aggregate in at first a paste and then eventually a very uh, solid uh, structural wall. Um, if we can do that, the Portland cement is very expensive, so if we can take some of the Portland cement out and put in some of this material that we can essentially get for free, uh, it can reduce the cost of the wall, it can be uh, helpful, but it also is uh, keeping the strength or uh, giving a different kind of version of the strength uh, into that concrete wall. So strength, but really the background of it is that you're trying to save money by using these uh, industrial cast-offs. Uh, and then superplasticizers are a very different animal. Sometimes it'll be just referred to as plasticizers, sometimes superplasticizers. Uh, there's a few other terms for, for these things. Um, this is, uh, the reason that you would add that to a mix is for workability. Um, and what we're talking about there, um, workability, oh, there we go, um, there's an I in there as well. Uh, what we're talking about there is, like, let's say you're the guy on the job site and a uh, uh, concrete truck shows up and you have to add a little bit of water at the, at the end and it's uh, to get the mix just right. And it's four o'clock on a Friday and you really want to get home and there's a lot of complicated form work and a lot of rebar in there. Like what you really want to do is you want to make that concrete really wet. You want to add a bunch of water to it. So you're going to put a bunch of water into the mix. So you've got uh, Portland cement, you've got the aggregate, you've got a couple of other things and you got the water. Uh, and the, um, the water and the Portland cement are going to have a chemical moment with each other and they're going to produce heat and they're going to produce this kind of crazy reaction that makes it, that turns it into a solid, uh, the, the thing that we think of as concrete, that solidness. And by having it be sort of pasty, the pastiness of it, the sort of flowing pastiness of it allows for the, the aggregate, the big chunks of rocks, uh, to be suspended in that paste, which is what you want. Um, but the more of a hard paste it is, uh, the harder it's going to be to fit in around all of the rebar and in complicated form work. So imagine I have a, a wall and I've got a bunch of uh, rebar down, you know, somewhere in that wall, and I'm trying to get, I'm trying to place this concrete in, and I'm trying to get it around all that stuff. Um, the more workable it is, the more wet it is, the more water I put in, it's going to make that way, way easier to kind of fill in and it'll just, you know, be like, uh, uh, you know, kind of water kind of filling in around all those things, which is going to be awesome if you're the guy trying to get there and get out and get home to your family. Uh, but uh, the wetter it is, the, the more uh, soupy it is, the less that the... Uh, 
aggregate will, will remain suspended in that mix. And so you'll start getting all the aggregate falling by gravity down to the bottom and all the cement rising to the top. And that's going to be a terrible wall. So you don't want a really, really wet mix of concrete for that reason. But the other reason you'll, you don't want that is that there's a, actually a very limited amount of the water is needed for this chemical moment with the Portland cement. Uh, the, uh, that chemical moment actually only really needs uh, less, uh, it needs less water to go through the, that chemical process than what you need to make it workable. So there's already, even in the stiffest concrete paste that you're using, there's already too much water. So the more water I put in there, I'm actually making the concrete weaker and weaker because I have all this excess uh, moisture in there that then has to get out and it leaves uh, void spaces and it causes all kinds of problems. So if I am looking for strength, I want to go with the uh, least amount of water I can get in, I can manage to use because um, I want to I make it uh, as close to the right amount of water per uh, uh, amount of uh, cement so they have just enough that really makes all the cement work and then as little extra as possible. But if I do that, it's like not workable at all. So uh, it's maybe possible to do something with a very, very stiff uh, paste if I'm doing it for a uh, precast um, structure where I, where I have a lot more control over how the formwork works. But if I'm out on a job site, I, I have to have more, more workability than that. So, okay, how do you do that without reducing the quality of uh, the concrete? Well, one of the ways you can do it is you use these super plasticizers. And what they do is they just kind of, it's almost like giving um, uh, uh, like a little bit of, uh, it makes everything feel like it's got a little bit of wax on it. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with wax, but um, you start to get this situation where all this stuff is moving back and forth much more flowy and easily. Uh, and it'll do that for a little while as if you put more water in, but then after about 30 minutes, it'll speed up and cure very, very quickly. And then uh, it'll go on to the sort of normal curing process. So it's a way of keeping the strength of the concrete, the compressive strength of the concrete, but getting it to be much, much more workable. Mm -hmm.